I'm gonna take a shot on this one. I'm gonna say beer. I'm buying everybody around on this! Oh my god! The Philadelphia Flyers will have to blow it all up very soon. Boys, I'm going to set the timer and I'm going to start this out by buying everybody around. They are not only going to have to blow it up, but goodness only knows what the plan is. Remember when there was the talk about uh, Ivan Provorov being a potential Norris Trophy finalist at some point or even winner? Shane Gossespierre was this uh, offensive defenseman that changed around the game. They had all this young talent. Uh, Travis Sanheim, uh, Sam Moran, and, and, and the Farabee and all these other guys. Not really can and they're not really gelling as a team. So I, I, I don't I just don't see it. And you're gonna have to get rid of some of some of the bigger veterans and I, I don't know where they go from here. That's that's my number one problem. I have no solutions for them. Philk. Yeah, I'm buying around on this. Um Claude Giroux's contract is is up. I, I would try to get as much as you can for him at this deadline. Uh I, if I could move Kevin Hayes, I would move Kevin Hayes. I just don't know if anybody's going to take on him at $7 million because he just mm -hmm. has not been worth that contract at all. Um, Sam, uh, Travis Sanheim has been disappointing, in, in my opinion. Uh, I love I, I love Joel Faraby. I think he's a great player. But uh, I, they need a serious restart in Philly. So, round. Anthony. I'm going to go beer. Um, yeah, Giroux's contract's up, so he's going to probably be gone at some point. But, I mean – who do they have to move? I mean, Phil mentioned Kevin Hayes. I don't know if anyone's touching that contract. They're not going to move Sean Couturier, nor, I mean, really, they should. Joel Farabee, Joel Farabee is, I, I like him a lot. Um, I think I like Konechny. Provorov, I think, is actually a, a pretty good defenseman. I, I have no really problems yeah. with him. Just he can't do it all himself. As Phil said, mentioned, Sanheim hasn't really lived up his expectations, and that's hard. And then Carter Hart rebounded. He's got a 9-11 save percentage. That's not particularly good, but being how bad he was last year, yep. that's a big improvement. Um, so, yeah, beer, only because I don't know – I really don't know who they could really move and the players they would want to move, like Van Riemsdyk or Hayes. I don't know if anyone's taking those contracts. I get. I do got to say this. Uh, last night's game, Carter Hart's knocking the stick that – I think it was Zidane Char was in the box and he was coming out. So it's the end of the power play. Provorov gets the puck. He skates up to about the top of the circles and then does a little drop pass to no one. Like that, I, I know it's indicative of one play, but it's not, it's not his season or his career, but, but what is, what, what's he doing? And, and yes, he's doing, he, he's, he can't do it all by himself. And even in all this, I forgot to flash up that the flyers have 34 points and they're 25th in the NHL. So we're going to move on. Guys, this is a big one. We've been talking about this one for a while. We're going to have to do it again. If the Edmonton Oilers miss the playoffs, Connor McDavid will demand a trade. Filk. This one's a tough one. Uh, I'm going to say beer just because I don't know if he necessarily does it now, but there is going to be a major shakeup if Edmonton misses the playoffs and there is going to be media hell. If you think Leon Dreisaitl getting pissy, as Jim Matheson says with him, um, is bad, you just wait for the shit storm that happens if Edmonton misses the playoffs. So I'm going to go beer here. Anthony. Um, in the context of this question, I'm going to go shot because I don't think it's going to be this year that he acts for out. But if things don't change in the next two years – because what he's got four years left on his contract, if I'm not mistaken. McDavid. So, yeah. Yeah. Double we'll double check that, four. but I believe it's four. So I mean, he he very well might maybe halfway through with two years left, he may say if nothing changes, he has enough in X route. I just don't think it's gonna happen this offseason. Yeah, four they, four years yeah. left, and then his no movement clause kicks in this offseason. All right. Ooh. Yeah, I don't I don't think I don't think that's happening this year. I, I would be shocked if it came this early, but I will say, like again, I think it will happen if things don't improve. Um, I mean, this team, this team is a disaster. I mean, the, the just you could see the what happened with Dry Side all the press conference. You know, you could see tensions are high. They're obviously pissed off, rightfully so. Were they two ten and two in their last, but 
four, 14 games, I believe. Um, uh, yes, so actually, I had it right, I had it yeah. right here. In the last 10 is <laughs> two, six, and two. Uh, yes, I believe you're right. Two, so, two, ten, oh, and two. You're making, you're trying to make them look better, but the whole thing, they're, that's even worse. <laughs> they're, they're not, they're not playing good hockey and, and things a mess there in Edmonton. So, um, boy. I, I, I mean, yeah, that's that's going to be a tough situation if they do miss, but I don't think it's happening this soon. And, and by the way, we're going to play that clip for you in a second that we keep talking about. But uh, I, I'm I'm, I'm going to go beer. I'm not going to buy everybody around. I've been say, predicting gloom and doom on this since Jack Eichel last year. But let me just flash this one out at you for, for you guys. Um, uh, well, I had the upcoming games. There aren't many wins in there. And then the last time the Oilers won a playoff game, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 opened at the box office. Wow. Yeah. You were wasting Connor McDavid's career. Corey I mean, Perry unless... was still an Anaheim duck. Yeah. And on, by the way, let me also say, I'm not counting the play-in round. So that was ridiculous. Which, by the way, we'll get to the play-in round in a moment, too. But it's there's there's a lot of problems that are going on in Edmonton, and I'm not sure if Connor McDavid wants to wants to stick around for it, especially when you just don't you you, you don't know if he's the perfect solution. He what he, what what can he do? I mean, he's he scored nearly 100 points last year. They didn't win a damn game in the playoffs. It, it's amazing and and just mind boggling. And boys, here is that clip we were talking about right now. Lots of reasons for why the owners are playing the way they are in terms of winning and losing. What do you think is the number one reason for the losses now? Is there is there one thing that you, in your own mind, you're saying we got to get better at that? Yeah, we have, we have to get better at everything. Would you like to expand on that? No. Nope. You can do that. You know everything. Why are you so pissy, Leon? Hmm? Why are you so pissy? I'm not. I'm just That's, answering your yeah, question. Yeah, you are. Whenever I asked you a question. I gave you an answer. Not very good one. Okay. I have one more for you. Leon, you showed your frustration on the ice last game against Ottawa. Is that a good thing when you show it so the other team knows you're frustrated? Yeah, it's a great thing, for sure. Good. Yeah. And by the way, why is he asking that question? That's ridiculous. What why question? are you so pissy? Oh, that question. Like, uh, what reporter asked that question? He, he, he's basically setting him up for a gotcha type moment to try to throw his teammates under the bus. And when Leon doesn't take the bait, he gets annoyed that Leon doesn't take the bait and sees right through his garbage. That's, that's a joke, man. That's a joke. I mean, and 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 he deserved the response that Dry Sidle gave him. Good. I have no. Pro and you know what? Ryan Callahan last night was on uh, the ESPN telecast of the Flyers Islanders game, and he came right out and said, "Good for Leon for not taking the bait and giving him the answer that he gave him." Good. You know what? When I wish more players would do this and show the personalities that they have. Because you know what, it, it, the media out there, and you know what, it's funny that I'm saying this because we're we're trying to be in the media here. You know that a lot of these a lot of these guys want to you know play games with the, these guys and put them into corners and trap them. And you know what? And Matheson got frustrated. And Matheson has been doing this in Edmonton for years, for years with all different types of players. So you know what? Good on Leon for 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 telling it how it is and giving him a taste of his own medicine. Too bad. So sad. Anthony, your thoughts on the question? I just thought that's funny. I, I I said this last week. We're talking about a McDavid. We're talking about a McDavid trade. Yeah, for, we were talking about for that. These, yeah, for these that's fans awesome. clamoring to get him, you're you're not realizing your team's going to look a whole lot of it different once he's on the roster to the point where it's not worth it. Um, but as far as the the dry saddle mix up with um, Matheson, listen, I think I think it's not just dry saddle that's frustrated. Let's face it, when you're a reporter. And you cover a team that's just been disappointing for you know for so long and not living to expectations. Just like the player, I, I think it gets to you, you know, and you become frustrated too. I don't think it was a perfect storm. Um, but listen, it is what it is. It's a dust up. I'm I'm sure that 
there's no ill will there long term and they'll be fine. But good for Leon Dreisaitl kind of giving it back to him for sure. You know, that was an interesting perspective on that, Ant. I never even had that come to mind anyway. But uh, about being a reporter and, and, and being frustrated as you're covering the team. Yeah, so. and you know what? And they're they're frustrated too because some of these guys get attached to the team and they want the team to do well. And I, I get that, but you can't handle yourself in that type of way and expect not to get that type of response from Dreisaitl or anyone that you're asking that type of question to in that kind of inflammatory way. That's it. Yeah, and that's just the way to say it. Guys, next week we're going to be doing our midseason awards. And one name that's going to be coming up is going to be the name right here. Jonathan Huberdeau is a Hart Trophy finalist. Filk, what do you think? Uh, I know I said this a, a, a few weeks back, maybe a month or so, maybe a little longer. But, yeah, he's got to be right there in it. I'm buying around on this. This guy is doing everything in Florida. Alexander Barkov is not having – the year that you would expect offensively from a guy like him. And I, for, for me, I mean, this was a guy that in 2019 scored uh, a, a point per game, uh, actually 90 points in, in 2019. Barkov only has 29 and 26. That's still really good, but he's missed time. And, and Huberto has picked up the slack while he's missed that time with 53 points in 39 games for Florida. So that's pretty damn good. So I'm, I'm buying a round on this. Anthony. Yeah, I'm, I'm doing a round as well. Um, you know, I, I think he's been incredibly important to this Panthers team. Um, you know, as Phil said with Barkov, Bar no, 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 Barkov's still an amazing player, but I feel like Huberto is really driving this team right now. He leads the league in assists. He's fourth in the NHL in points, as you see there. Um, you know, he could do it all, pass, shoot. He could skate really well. He could dangle. Um, you know, it's and he's had great years before this. He's been producing at a, you know, high level for the last couple of years. So it'll be nice to see him get some recognition. Um, so right now, honestly, him and Ovechkin it would be a toss-up for me, but he's definitely a finalist if, he, if not winning it. Uh, I'm going to buy a round two, boys. And I wasn't exactly on the Jonathan Huberto uh, – bandwagon exactly but he's two points behind alexander ovechkin for the for the league lead and he's he's fourth right now but that could change in just one game this team puts up goals in buckets all the time and yeah it's huberdo it's huberdo doing most of it so if you like that video we got a lot more so check out any of these that are right over here and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.